In the dark of graveyard Joseph Arthur is many things. A musician who writes and records at a rapid fire pace unbound by genre, a poet, and a painter who frequently shows his work all around the world. We caught up with the Brooklyn artist to talk about his latest LPs, Graduation Ceremony, and Redemption City, and get a peek into his painting process as well. So basically, let's get the background on this here. For years now, you've been you've been a painter as well as a musician. Yeah. Um, how, when, when did you start painting then? When I was a kid, I just never stopped. My yeah. mom said, oh, I like your drawings. And, and uh, when I was super young, and I was like, really? And she's like, yeah, because they got personality. So it was like early encouragement is yeah. important for the youth of America. Your mom likes your moxie. She, likes, she, she thinks you, know, you got moxie. I guess mo most moms should like your kids moxie. That's true. You know? <laughs> that's true. But maybe they forget to tell their kids yeah. that they like their moxie. Oh, that's true. Yeah, a lot of them. How many paintings do you do at this point? So you do usually every show you do a painting? Yeah, lately. Yeah. I mean, when I play, when I tour solo, I do. Yeah. yeah. So basically, Joe's father gets on stage while playing Thanks. music. Uh, while playing music, you, you'll, you'll do a painting too. And, uh, and you've got it down where you will do the guitars and the loops, and you've got the microphone in your hand the whole time. Yeah. Does that take a lot of practice? Um, the first time I did it was in L.A., and I did it just during a sound check, or just during a sound check, and like right when I walked on stage and right when I walked off and then a journalist asked me, oh, I heard you paint live on stage while you sing. And I hadn't done that yet, but that you know, light yeah. bulb went off that I could do it while I sang at the same time. Yeah. Make a loop with a song, live, live looping, and then, yeah, singing and playing. Um, it, it's something that's developed over years, but uh, I think it when you sort of occupy your mind with, with a lot of stuff, then you can kind of tap into something like, more visceral and unconscious, you know, so. Well, it's good, especially nowadays, when music doesn't really make people a living anymore, or, or it's harder to come by. So it's nice to have a plan B after all. <laughs> Turns out it is. <laughs> Art, you know, it comes from an unconscious place. It's like, the, so it's, it's somewhat sort of conscious, it's like blending, you know, sort of your con you know, sort of your right brain and left brain or conscious mind and unconscious mind. It's a marriage there. And I think the really powerful stuff is sort of dictated to you, not to sound like overtly esoteric, but there's mm -hmm. just truth to that. Now I just watch this Woody Allen documentary and I want to make a movie. Well, you should. I mean, you, you've, you've got this great history about you. I mean, that's one thing. You've kind of always done stuff on your own terms. And I don't know if that was because, I mean, so you, you, you got, you were discovered. You were discovered by Peter Gabriel, the now right. kind of legendary story. Uh, you've never really had to go through the big machine, right? Yeah, I mean, I went through various uh, um, incarnations of the machine. Is that how you say it? Incarnations? Sure. Um, you know, it was a... Uh, I, I kind of went through... I had a... Like, my second record, which was Come to Where I'm From, sort of went through Virgin Records, mm -hmm. through Real World, but... Virgin Records in America picked it up and it was produced by T-Bone Burnett and it was kind of a major release so I kind of experienced that, that major label yeah. sort of thing, riding around on the bus and everything like that. And, um, yeah, I've gone through all kinds of different phases with it, with, with a band, without, right. touring in a van, touring in a bus, back in the van, back on the bus. Now back on the van again. <laughs> so but how do you now, like it right now, though? I mean, because you're, you're kind of a one-man band. You, you do have yeah. all your effects that you do this with. And... Yeah, I've been doing this one again for like the last couple of years. So I'm kind of ready to, I think, explore playing with people again. Yeah. You know, it's like you kind of burn out on one thing and you sort of go into something else. Yeah. Well, you do a lot of collaborations, too. Yeah, that's true. Do you have any of those? Yeah, I've, I've been making a record with this guy Russell Simmons, uh, who's the drummer for the John Spencer Blues Explosion. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Not the uh, right. Well, yeah. I mean, that's where the, the first one goes. <laughs> like, wow, that's gonna be. Oh yeah, yeah, the other guy's cool too. Yeah, the other guy's cool too. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually an amazing drummer. So yeah. we've been doing something very kind of rock and roll oriented, which is great to do. After my last record's pretty uh, kind of folky in a way sure. and, and sort of sensitive and. Uh, well, you know, I wrote it for you. So. You did. I mean, <laughs> Joseph Arthur wrote a breakup record for me. <laughs> this guy. Uh, I don't know if you knew, uh, Joseph said many, many times that his new CD, The Graduation Ceremony, is a breakup album. Well, it's, it's me. We're revealing that here? Yeah, that's I thought it. you said you didn't want to. 
You didn't want to talk about that. Okay. Just this gonna is, put it out there. This is kind of a cathartic moment. This thing. is. You Wait. feeling good? You feeling good about that decision? I feel odd about it, if I'm honest. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'll make little, it comfortable. I'm a little uncomfortable, but that's because the cameras are rolling. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I just wish you would have discussed it with me first. I mean, this is kind of why we broke up, I think. This could be, you know. You know, I just you, thought you always used to just do things without discussing them. Yeah. You know. Just thought it was I was married to my job, and you were, you know, it's, it's weird. Never had time for me. Yeah. A lot of your paintings have ended up as your album artwork. That's true. Yeah. When you're when you're choosing one that says that's the, I mean, do you know instantly when you look at them? It's like that's the one I want for an album. No. Um, the early days, it was like a lot of work, and I, I worked with Zachary Larner, and he helped me do all of them, and uh, we spent as much time working on album covers as we did working on music. So, so it's interesting though, um, especially with a musician, and I think maybe even more so you than most musicians. Um, when a musician, when I look back at my life, it's in pictures and you know, and I can see this is me in that picture at this age and this is what I was, but you kind of get to see yourself in albums. Yeah. And, and now you know, you also have this visual piece that accompanies it that's also you, it's not just some other photographer. But yeah. what's it like actually seeing your life in albums? versus it's, just a yearbook. It, you know? Yeah, it's it takes nostalgia to the next level. Yeah. It does because music is um, has an emotional weight all its own. And so then if you couple that with the nostalgia of the past, mm -hmm. it's like it's pretty heavy actually because you're like and, and also each body of work represents uh, relationships and formations of right. these unions and this like amazing connections with these people that in most cases aren't really necessarily active parts of your life anymore. So it kind of like, um, it takes you r right into the ultimate question of like, uh, you know, of, of life moving on and makes right. you go pretty heavy, you know? So consequently, I don't spend that much time listening. If you're from uh, Ohio? A Akron, Ohio. Ohio. Yeah. When'd you leave the Midwest? When'd you get out? 18. I yeah. gra graduated high school and four days later I was in Atlanta. W were, you, were you ready? I mean, just to get out. Get yeah, out. I was. I mean, Ohio, I love Ohio. I love going back. My folks still live there in the same house we grew up, or I grew up in, and uh, or we, I guess we all grew up in. <laughs> yeah, and I left. My friends started a band. I was in it, and they were like, hey, we're going to Atlanta. Do you want to come? And I was like, yeah. Yeah. Four days later. So I just moved. I didn't go to college. I just sold jewelry on the street outside of this place called Urban Tribe, taking God. acid not wearing a shirt, having long hair and a girlfriend. I would have ran away was, from you. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs>